As a way to wrap up the chapter, now that we've dealt with E and more importantly we have dealt with the electric force enough, let's incorporate that back to the stuff we've been doing with other forces. And the electric forces still applies with sum of forces is equal to ma. It is just one of the many forces that may be at play in a given problem. It's by no means exclusive, much like gravity. It can be mixed in with friction and tension and so on and so forth. All right, so here we're saying that this insulating ball is hanging, so it's given to us that the ball is not moving. Static equilibrium, as some might say. And we want to find the strength of the field. In this case, this is a uniform electric field, so we're actually given that E is the same everywhere. And so this one you don't need. It's not a point charge, so you can't use that, right? There's no, you don't know the charge that's causing this E. But E is a given number. That's all we're trying to find. What we do know is whatever this E is, we can get the amount of force by multiplying it by the charge that was at play. And we're given that this is plus one microcoulombs. Given that this is a plus charge, we know that the electric field is going to have to push in the same direction as the electric force. And so we have that force direction already set up. To do F equals MA, of course, let's do a free body diagram. This ball is still on Earth, so it's still got Fg at play, which is equal to mg, of course. Uh, as we've drawn in, we've got the electric field, therefore the electric force, and that's equals to Qe. And then the only other thing it touches is the string, so that's going to give us a tension. It doesn't touch any surfaces, so no normal force, no friction force. We're done. So given this, it seems like the most logical breakdown would be set up X and Y like that. You can choose to set up any other way. It should give you the same answer. So the approach here is we want to solve for this. So we want to solve for this. And then in order to do so, we need to look at the sum of forces in the X. But then that necessitates us to find T, which then we can use the sum of forces of the Y to find that. So just kind of show you kind of what my thought process is in order to approach a more multi-step problem like this. This Then we work backwards. This is the stuff we know, right? So we work backwards. So we're going to do some of forces in the Y first because that has everything we know except for tension. And that's equal to MAY, which is equal to zero. It's equal to tension. In this case, this is Ty, so it's cosine 8 degrees minus mg. So having that, we can solve that T is equal to mg divided by cos 8 degrees. Then we move on to sum of forces x. Right, this is sum of forces y. Moving back to sum of forces x. Max is equal to zero, and that lets us talk about what Fe is because Fe is positive minus T in the x direction going the other way, and that's sine of eight. Subbing in, subbing in my T, we know that Fe is equal to T sine eight degrees, which is mg sine of 8 degrees over cosine of 8 degrees. If you want, you can change this to tangent. Not super necessary. It's just more numbers to punch in the calculator. And that's equal to Fe. And we know Fe is equal to Q times E, or at least the magnitude of it. We know we've been given a direction. So then we just divide Q over. Easy peasy. Summing all numbers, what are we given? We're given mass as 5 grams, so let's change that to kilograms times 9.8 meters per second square for my g, tangent 8 degrees, all divided by 1 microcoulomb, so 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, 
And we get that the E being uniform is equal to some number. Uh, not to carry too many sig figs, we can use scientific notation. And there you go, you can solve for the electric field just like that. So once again, hopefully this demonstrates how electric field and leading to electric forces can incorporate very well in, in a sum of force equals ma kind of problem, even in 2D or 3D.